Hi, this is Alex Fordenberry. Uh, this is the video for a one-on-one -on -one interview, again, featuring David Twillinger, head of videography for Crew Athletics. So let's begin. Hey, good afternoon. Are you Alex? Yes, I am. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Awesome. So how are you today? I'm doing all right. Cool. Well, let's go ahead, head into the room, and we'll meet in here. Okay. So, awesome. Uh, thank you for seeing me today. I brought with me a copy of my resume. I know you may already have one by now, but it doesn't hurt to have another copy, sir. Awesome. Thank you so much. All Appreciate right. it. Uh, help yourself to a seat. I uh, need a water or anything before we get started? Uh, no, thank you. I brought my own drink. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. All right. Alrighty, sir. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we'll get started here in a few minutes. Um, just uh, we'll start off with some easy questions and then we'll move on to some tougher ones as we go. You might see me writing throughout uh, some. Don't worry about it. Just make some notes to keep things in my mind. So uh, we'll start off with a simple one. How's your day going? My day's doing pretty good, pretty good so far. Good weather today and uh, I didn't have trouble getting here. Glad to hear that. Um, so, next question is, how about you tell me uh, what you know about UMHB? Well, I've been going to UMHB for a couple years now. I recently earned my master's degree in sports administration, and uh, I like the uh, student body here and uh, the Christian atmosphere that's also on this campus. I uh, also like the, uh, the sports memorabilia as well as just the overall atmosphere and culture this place has. Well, very cool that you uh, are such a fan of the university and, you know, being a alum myself, I understand, you know, the draw and pool for the uh, uh, one of the work here. So uh, going into more on the position that you're hiring or uh, applying for rather, uh, Go ahead and uh, tell me some about your video background to start with. Well, I started out doing uh, video work for Troy Athletics over in Troy, Texas, which is uh, my alumni for high school. And uh, little by little, they've been giving me more to do because the, they would like my work. And uh, every year they keep asking me back, or at least hoping that I'd be back. It's good that I worked for free and I was good at what I did too. I uh, started out just uh, filming tight and wide angles for the athletics for their football team. And uh, eventually I got to the point where they allowed me to upload that film. And uh, afterwards, uh, I was put in charge in ordering new equipment such as cords and uh, remotes for the end zone camera with a uh, uh, equipment provider. Uh, recently, I had to replace a HDMI cord and a multi-cord for the end zone camera. So, luckily, we were able to get all that put in before the next game day. Very cool. Um, so, you have, uh, sounds like some good coaching film experience and things like that. Uh, go ahead and describe for me some of the experience you have, live stream games, creating highlights, that sort of thing. Uh, my live streaming games I've done with UMHB. Uh, started out volunteering and then as a student worker. I uh, would be on the sideline or on top on the uh, mid camera to catch all the action. And what I would do is just I try to follow the action where it would be easy for online viewers to see. And just uh, whenever something uh, amazing happens, just like a slow zoom in or pan out so that people can uh, relish in the moment, not just for academic purposes, but just for the pure entertainment of it. And uh, about as far as uh, working at, at the live stream itself, I mostly worked with the cameras and setting up the cameras. So I would uh, work on connecting the right cord so that it will connect to the right server so that we'll be able to get the visual and uh, audio with uh, the game as well. So with working all of those um, positions there, live streaming and such, uh, go ahead and describe for me or tell me what you would do in a situation if some components doesn't work in the live stream. Say you're not getting a camera signal to the computer to stream. What would you do? 
Well, first I would check the little things, just turn it off and on, see if that might reset something. Then I would check uh, the, uh, the dials on the side, make sure that it's not too bright or too dark. Then after that, I'll just look at the cords, take one cord out and replace it with another so that we'll be making sure it's not one of the cords fault and just go down a, a list of things to do before I make a decision on whether or not we need to switch cameras or not. Alright, further on in this example, say so you do all that and uh, still you get a picture now but now the stream's not going. Not pushing out to the, our provider uh, who streams our games for us to the public, what do you do then? That sounds like it might be a computer issue, so from there I would have to say uh, probably refresh the page, if not maybe refresh the computer itself, which will take time, yes, but uh, it's better than us losing, uh, pulling the hair out of our heads trying to figure out what's wrong with this, but you know, sometimes the easy solutions are the solutions that is needed. Awesome, so that just worked, you're up and streaming now, and now it's going out to the public, and you get a phone call from someone saying that their stream is messed up still. How would you handle that situation? Uh, first, I would see call the uh, guys who are handling the streaming and the switchboard and making sure that they're having uh, any issues themselves. Just to make sure it's not an individual issue. If it may be an individual issue, I would advise them calmly and respectfully that they may have to refresh their computer since this is on a computer and it's dependent on uh, Wi-Fi capabilities which a whole lot of people share Wi-Fi and as if you know can sometimes slow the signal down so happy customers now everybody's working on the stream streams going great you know it's working great but you have that one per person who's still persisting that they're having issues how do you deal with that situation Well, you know, being that this is going to be an issue for this one person, but I would also like everyone to um, have uh, the viewing pleasure. And I do not know if this guy can share, or uh, he or she can share off of someone else's device. I would see if there's anyone else available to either go and assist this customer, or if need be, someone can take my place and I would go and assist this customer myself, because that way I'll be able to understand uh, the customer's point of view and uh, their frustration, what they're having with their device. That way, none of us are butting heads on what's going to work and what's not. That way, I'll be there, we'll be on the same page, and we will be able to get through it nice and calm. Okay, moving away from uh, live streaming now and more into coaching videos, since this role that you're applying for is definitely multifaceted. Um, say you're at practice and either through your uh, fault or no fault of your own or fault or no fault of one of your students, uh, some practice film is missing. How do you go about handling that situation? Well, first I would see who had what camera and who was responsible for what part of the practice that was supposed to be taken care of. And then I would look at the camera itself just to make sure if it was on there or not because it's best to be thorough in this kind of investigation. Then I would talk with the students self, themselves and uh, see where they were at that time, but also just to make sure if they remembered to hit the button. And uh, if it turns out that if I got to hit the button or they just didn't hit it hard enough, I just get just keep them relaxed and calm. I'm not going to come after them. And, and I mean, we want them to feel comfortable around the players. So I know I'd probably be taking heat, but it's best that the student will just learn from their mistake and be able to do better next time. It's better to encourage them to do better than just go after them and, you know, disencourage them from returning ever again. So that works. You figure it out. Um, the film is missing and all that sort of thing. You've looked on all the cameras. The situation has been explained. You figured out the mystery now. How do you go about telling coach? that he doesn't have what he's asked for. Well, although it is unpredictable how a coach may react, and depending on how far we are in the season, it would be very tricky, but I would uh, 
start out from sending an email to the coach trying to set up a meeting to talk about said missing footage and he and I can calmly talk about the missing footage and what we can do further along rather is move that student to another section where they're more reliable but still useful for us and have a more reliable student into more experienced student I should say filming that part of practice that way in the future we all be happy all right so that's what you do in a practice and whatnot so let's move to a game type situation here and let's say you're at a game and you get there and you're expecting to be able to film you know your sideline and your end zone but guess what the school comes back and tells you that you can't film in one of those locations what do you do uh, first I will uh, give that give, pass this information along with the coaches and let them know of our limitations due to the uh, school we're visiting's rules. And then I would talk to them over on which is probably the best place, or uh, I would talk to, if they want us to have both angles, I would have to talk to someone in administration on the other school side on figuring more on uh, why we can't use one of those areas and where it says in the NCAA 3 rule book saying we can't have a sideline or end zone at their school. Okay, say that their persistence, that you've talked to their coaches, you've talked to their administrators, and they're, they're just not going to give in. How do you proceed? At this point, I think it would probably be best to contact uh, UMHB's athletic director, let them know what's going on, and uh, share with them my concerns of uh, why they may not be allowing us to use one of those locations when I when other schools seem to be all right with us in those locations and I have not heard of anything in NCAA 3 uh, allowing this kind of stuff to happen and uh, it may not take may not be fixed that day but at least it might be fixed later on the road all right so sounds like we got the, what I need for there so moving on now we're going to move into more um, I'll call them uh, interpersonal questions you know how you interact with other people that sort of thing so um, tell me about a time when you've had a uh, difficult situation with a co-worker and how did you what the situation was and how did you handle it well this goes back to uh, working in Troy we were having some issues with the end zone camera again and uh, some of the coaches were starting to think it was whoever's left in charge of the end zone camera. But uh, I told them I will take care of it. I'll look at the equipment myself since this is under my you know, self-proclaimed job description. Since I was a volunteer and they were giving me, uh, they gave me the responsibility of watching over the equipment. And uh, I was able to point out that there are some technical difficulties within the remote itself that a lot that was causing the camera to uh, record off and on at random times. So that was something that was just far above uh, the capabilities of who was handling the end zone camera at that time. So I was able to you know, save them from wanting to boot him out because he also enjoys going to those games and uh, he was actually a good person for the kids to relate to and I wanted them to have that other elder role model around them when we travel for games. And uh, right now, we managed to get a new remote and we're able to record properly with the end zone camera. And right now, everything's just settled down between uh, end zone camera and the coaches. All right, in athletics, you know that sometimes uh, people can have um, difficult personalities to work with. How would you deal with a coach that's being difficult? Uh, can I have a for instance on this situation? Absolutely. Let's just say, you know, coach is in the middle of, you know, comes in right after practice. Hey, where's my practice film? And keeps demanding, you know, that he wants it right now, needs it right now. But you know that it's the last drill on the card and it takes, you know, 15, 20 minutes to input it. How, how would you deal with a coach being in a difficult situation like that? Well, first off, I don't want him to see me get flustered 
he sees me get flustered, he'll be on the defenses as well. So what I do is I put on a smile because I'm already uploading this film. It's like, it is being uploaded right away, sir, so you should get it within the hour. Maybe even sooner. And uh, the important thing is, is that we're, I'm not trying to make enemies. And I know all coaches, they have uh, different uh, uh, expectations, especially when it comes to game film. And sometimes, some weeks are probably going to be more... There's going to be more pressure on them because, you know, one week we'll probably be playing a uh, sloppy team. The next week we'll be playing number one offense. Week after that, number one defense. So some coaches will have some pressure on them, and I understand that. I've been in there with coaches after a game, after a win, and after a loss, and everything is like next week is this team, and this is what they do well, and we'll discuss this tomorrow. I understand that and understand the pressure these coaches are in. And I don't want to build up on that, but the least I can do is just give him a smile, nod, yes, sir, it's on its way, sir. Here it comes, sir. So, uh, as you know, you know, having volunteered time with athletics and being in athletics for a while, that it's not your typical nine to five job. Um, that there's a lot of events after uh, normal working hours for practices and games and whatnot. Um, so how would you handle a situation, you know, it's a off day or something for you normally or you're after hours and you get a call from a coach requesting uh, some film or some edits or, you know, just any request, making a request for you, you know, after hours? Well, knowing that the coach took the time to call me where he could probably ask uh, one of the other uh, grad students. I know I'm not the only one on the staff, but knowing he took the time to call me. Uh, puts confidence in me and I would be right over even even after hours because I, I'm, I don't live pretty far. I live about maybe 20, 25 minutes away so I can get down here with a good time and uh, be able to work on whatever he needs to work on. Uh, again, that would put, that just shows the confidence he and I would have to with each other and uh, like I do with my family members, whenever they ask me for something, I'm usually drop everything right there and just head on over. All right, this is a two-parter here. So uh, go ahead and describe for me one of your greatest successes in your video experience and one of your greatest uh, disappointments in your video experience. Uh, so my greatest successes in my video experience is uh, being able to be, uh, be trusted to film a, uh, a tournament game alone for a while while everyone else had to do separate things. I uh, was in charge of uh, just uh, picking to start the stream and then going to the high mid of camera and then just following the action as we went along and then just stopping stream whenever one game ended and then moving right along from there. Uh, my greatest failure as far as uh, the filming goes, it would have to be whenever uh, we couldn't get the end zone camera to work at all, mostly because... Uh, Conditions beyond, uh, well, most because I forgot the battery for the uh, camera below. All right, but uh, I learned from that. Uh, make sure I had like a list to, and I triple checked it before we even left anywhere. And always made sure I arrived uh, two or two and a half hours before we leave for a game day, just to make sure I had everything and put everything by the door where as we're getting ready to leave, I would open the cases up again, just make sure I have everything I want and close the cases up and then put them on the bus. Following along with that uh, question, go ahead and uh, describe for me what you think is your greatest strength and what your greatest weakness is. Uh, my greatest strength, I would have to say, is my determination. Uh, I like to make sure the job is done as well as it can be uh, to the best of my abilities even whenever there are some things that I can't control that kind of hinders it I would like to for it to be as good as it can be for that situation alone and like my greatest weakness is is sometimes it I can get distracted when I'm just focused on one thing when I should also be focused on another thing I can get too involved in one one situation when I realize oh something similar is happening over there So following up on that, um, 
being in the video worlds, multimedia worlds, uh, especially live game production, coaching film, all that, there are a lot of moving parts on there. What um, steps have you learned to take to ensure that you are able to not tunnel vision into um, one thing but are to ensure that you're able to make sure it's all take, being taken care of? Well, first, I do the basic strategy, which is stop and breathe. So I can take a moment to like get away from that which caused me to take all my attention. Then I just look around myself. Uh, I try to keep that in a, uh, not really a time interval, but moreover when I get to a good spot or when I just feel frustrated, I have to step away from it so I don't go, uh, so I don't get too upset about it. And I just look around to see if there's anything else that I can do right there in the moment before I go back to that, because sometimes uh, the answer for one problem comes to you while you're fixing another problem, actually. All right, a uh, slightly different question here. Uh, again, another multi-parter. What type of person do you work best with? What type of person do you uh, have the hardest time working for? Uh, I think the person I can work best with is someone who's always willing to uh, teach me something new. It's like, even whenever I'm, uh, uh, even as I work as a PE aide, uh, teachers are already telling me the uh, the scoop of like things that inside the teacher's uh, world, and uh, they're also even encouraging me to become one. Uh, they're even teaching me uh, how to handle certain situations such as how to break up fights or how to talk to a student whenever they feel down or depressed and would lock themselves in a, in a bathroom stall. Um, person that's probably the most difficult to work with is uh, uh, one who puts too much, uh, too much expectations, unrealistic expectations on, uh, on everyone else when they themselves can't fulfill it. Uh, I haven't run into too many of those people uh, with those kind of people, uh, I just find it best to just focus on what I do and try to do it to the best of my abilities. And if they have comments on it, I just take it as constructive criticism. I can take that. And I just work on it, just knowing that it will make me better. Um, and then I'll just try and just make sure that it never gets head-to-head uh, -head between me and them. All right, for this uh, next uh, series of questions here, it's going to be a few multi-rapid-fire uh, questions, so to speak, here. Just uh, one word, two word answers are acceptable, or if you need to go into a little bit more detail, feel free to go into a little bit more detail. So. All right, sounds good. All right, so um, if I were to ask your current or former employer reference uh, these questions, how would they describe each of these different characteristics. Your punctuality. It's good, right on time. Okay, uh, what about your uh, uh, work appearance? I always dress uh, work casual, uh, long pants and a collared shirt. Okay, um, what about your ability to work with others? I uh, works with others fine, uh, works with others pretty well and works with kids great. Your ability to produce accurate and neat work. Uh, he does good work. Okay. Um, your ability to interact with those that are older or younger than you. Uh, he interacts with them very well. Very well. Um, and then I guess the last one on my list is uh, you comfortable with technology, ability to use technology. Yes, I am comfortable with it, and whatever I don't know, I can learn. Okay. Well, thank you. There you go. Well, awesome, Alex. That's uh, about all I have for today on my list. Uh, so at this time, I would like to go ahead and just turn the interview over to you. See so if you have any questions, anything like that, uh, I can be of assistance and ask for you about this, or answer for you about this position. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, what would be a typical day for UMHB's videographers? Well, um, a typical day, um, there is no typical, typical day because every day, athletics, everything's changing, different world, everything. But if I had to follow a typical schedule, um, 
you know, going Monday through Sunday type of a thing. Monday is generally your office work type of day. You come in about 8, 9-ish, check on the coaches, make sure everything's good, uh, do any paperwork that you have, start downloading any scout games that are available, wrap up the end of the week, uh, the previous week, rather, wrap that week up, and then if it's a JV game, make sure your student workers have the JV game covered, and then you're on your way. If it's no JV game, then you're out about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Have a good day, tough thing. Tuesday in about 8, 9-ish, somewhere in there, make sure the coaches are still doing good, first thing. Mm. Excuse me. Uh, then from there, you'll uh, start working on scout film, start working on highlight, things like that. So that'll carry you through until about lunch. Lunch, get ready for practice. Practice should be out, you know, about 6, 30, 7, 30-ish, depending on, you know, how long practice is, if anybody missed anything, things like that. Wednesday is a repeat of Tuesday. Uh, Thursday, um, it's pretty much the same and then it just varies at the end of the day if it's a home game week then you know you're out about 6 37 if it's a away game week then it takes a little bit longer before you to pack up everything to leave out on friday make sure you have everything ready to pack and leave on friday so just however long it takes you to pack and leave things to go there friday um will vary depending on if it's a home game week or a away game week um, and I should have told you this at the start. This is for a typical fall. Spring is a little bit different, and we'll get into spring in a minute. Um, uh, excuse me, for Friday, home fall, if it's a home game, and about 12, 1 o'clock, make sure the coaches are good, get them through their meetings, double check, make sure you have everything ready for game day on Saturday, head out about 5. If it's a away game, whenever the team is leaving, they're early enough to meet the buses, to load up, and make sure you're on the bus and don't get left. <laughs> Saturday is game day. It varies depending on where home or away. If it's a home game, there a couple hours before the game. Make sure everything's ready, set, going, all that good stuff. If it's an away game, you're already going to be there, so you'll set up, film, and then come home type of thing. After games, input the film so it's ready. If scout games are available, you can input those or you can do those on Sunday. Sunday, just a quick check on coaches, make sure they're good. Finish scout game if you haven't finished scout game. And then once that's done, if they're good, you're good to go too. And that's a typical week for a fall. Spring, it's a lot easier, um, you know, more off normal office hours except for game days, you know, which, you know, depending on the sports is usually basketball, Thursday, Saturdays, baseballs, some Tuesdays or Friday, Saturdays type of things. And then other sports kind of mixed in throughout, which you or your uh, fellow video person would help you with type of thing. So you all can get those done. Any questions about scheduling? Uh, yes, would scheduling be easy to work around? Like, let's say if I had a uh, health or dental appointment to get to uh, in the afternoon or so. Uh, there is flexibility in that. Yes, there is. Um, obviously, we want you to take good care of yourself. You know, the preference would be if available to get it in the morning before or taken care of in the morning before practices or game times, but understands, you know, that Sometimes it's difficult to get appointments um, during those times. So that's just one of those that you'd have to communicate with me or your fellow assistant to get um, to make sure everything's covered. So, but yes, we would definitely be able to make sure and make sure all that stuff happens. Uh, so what if uh, I have a family emergency and I have to take a family member to the ER as soon as possible? Would that be easy to work around? So with that situation, of course, we're always, uh, you know, family is always the one of the highest priorities that we have. So, of course, we're, we're willing to work with you on that situation. Again, haven't had it happen yet, but with that one, we would just go with on a situation by situation basis. 
even with uh, just volunteers, you encourage creative thinking, such as for like special events or um, little videos to show before games. So with this position, there's definitely some room f and flexibility for creativity. Um, some things um, are going to be black and white regardless. You know, coaching film is always going to be coaching film. To a degree, live streams are always going to be live streams. Um, but there, part of this position would be making weekly highlights for football uh, before their game. So definitely have pretty much full creativity there. Um, and then we do do social media campaigns throughout the semester, throughout the year that input sought on and creativity is encouraged there as long as it's just within reason. Yes, we, we encourage creativity. I think those are the only questions that uh, I had in mind for this interview. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you for having me here today. You're very welcome. Thank you for uh, your time today, for coming in. Um, as we go throughout this process, you know, we do have a couple other applicants that we're looking at. So uh, we'll be back in touch with you. Someone from HR will be back in touch with you uh, with our decision um, once it is made. So in the meantime, if you have any questions or need to update any information or, you know, anything like that, feel free to reach out to HR, ask them. And if it, maybe they'll forward your question on to me and I'll be happy to ask you get answer that too. So... Again, appreciate your time and hope you have a wonderful day. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.